Hi there, my fellow Filipinos. Happy Independence Day to anyone in the Philippines or any Filipinos out there. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that's really close to my heart um, and a sport that I love. It's called the beautiful game, football. Obviously, it's not soccer, come on. Today, I'm going to be talking about this. The Philippine national football team, also known as the Astros. And um, the one match that changed the football forever in the Philippines. I hope this video can shed some light into the rise and the fall and the rise of the Philippines national football team and the match known as the Miracle of Hanoi. Now before we get started on today's video, I would really appreciate it if you guys can like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and click the notification bell so that you won't miss any football related or even Philippines related updates on this channel. Yes, I am probably the only Filipino football content creator on YouTube. I believe that is fact. The Philippine Football Federation, or how the Philippine national team was made, was formed in 1913. The team regularly competed in the Far East Asian Championship Games with its first match ever, ever, being a 2-1 victory against the Chinese, yes, in Manila, in February of 1913. But over the course of the 1910s and 1920s and 30s and so on and so forth, um, the Philippines would regularly compete against teams like China and Japan back in those early days and including a 15-2 victory over Japan in 1917, which is the biggest win that the national team has ever, ever achieved in that time. We even have a football player who is a legend at FC Barcelona named Paulinho Alcantara, who scored 395 goals in almost 400 games and he held this record at Barcelona until it was broken by someone you probably have heard of. But we can't really talk about football in the Philippines without mentioning a sort of elephant in the room. The other elephant, basketball. Now this is a little bit of a tangent, but it kind of helps into understanding why basketball became more prominent than football was. So let's start. So, basketball was first introduced to the Philippines during the uh, American occupation during 1898 to 1946 until we get our second independence. Second independence, come on. This was done through the YMCA. No, not this one. No, this one. The Young Men's Christian Association and the school system also introduced basketball as well. Basketball became part of the Philippines NCAA. No, not this one. No, but the National Collegiate Athletic Association back in 1924, and it made basketball the main sport of the NCAA. And so throughout the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, basketball became much more popular than football as the national team, the Philippines national team, for basketball had more success than those in the men's football team. And so this over time uh, grew basketball as the main international sport of the Philippines than football. Following our second independence in 1946 and throughout the 1950s, the Philippines would host few friendlies against top tier Asian sites as mentioned before, China, Japan, South Korea, and all these other big countries. But the national team experienced a lack of funding by the government or the PFF, the Philippine Football Federation, and it barely got any media coverage, which meant that no one didn't even know that we were playing a match against Japan for the 200th time. And so during that time in the 1950s and 1960s, Players from the national football team decided to move to basketball because basketball was much more lucrative. They were actually earning money 
it got more media coverage as well. Whereas football, you weren't getting paid any money, it had no media coverage, and you'll probably just play like one game every year. And the national team really, really suffered. We lost 15-0 to Japan, which was our biggest loss in our national team's history. <sighs> 15-0. And even during the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, football was just a mere afterthought in the Philippines. And literally no one cared in the Philippines. No one. Nada. No one. No one. Whereas basketball, it grew. In September 2006, the Philippines were ranked 195th in the football or FIFA world rankings which was our lowest in our history and that actually meant that the Philippine Football Federation decided that what's the point of even trying to register and enter the 2010 World Cup qualification stage it's just in a way it showed lack of ambition for the national team and that's how low it really was and there's like what probably like at the time 200 teams <laughs> we were the fifth worst in the world Fifth or sixth worst team in the world. Despite our low FIFA ranking in 2006, there were three key decisions that changed the course of history of the Philippine football team forever. In 2005, there was an anonymous gamer on the game football manager who found two academy prospects from the Chelsea youth system and if you don't know what Chelsea is this is Chelsea back in 2005 Jose Mourinho is already celebrating blue is the color Chelsea is the name on the premiership trophy there were two players that had Filipino heritage these players would be the two young husband brothers Phil and James young husband rumors of them joining the national team spread like wildfire and in the end we called them up to the national team in 2006. Along with that, a goalkeeper from Forum, yes, Forum were good in 2005, a goalkeeper named Neil Etheridge, you may know, also joined the national team in 2008 after receiving an invitation, once again by our football federation. And so, with these two or three players joining our national team, this started the story of the miracle of Hanoi. But we can also name two other key events. The first one was a man named Dan Palami, a Filipino businessman but was a sports addict. And he was appointed as the team's manager in 2009 to help the PFF in funding the national team because there was hardly any government support at that time still. One of the key things that Dan Palami had to do was to create a sustainable scouting network in which we can be able to find more players such as the Young Husband Brothers and Neil Etheridge that we can actually call up to the national football team and make it more lucrative. However, even back in 2009, the team was not that lucrative. They were still ranked this low in the FIFA rankings. And the third and final key event was the appointment of a man named Simon McMenemy who is a Scottish manager but was contacted through another player yet again another player who is from England but has Filipino blood Chris Trentrich who he worked alongside McMenemy and decided to ask him to join the national team as the new head coach in 2010 and so after applying the PFF decided to appoint McMenemy for the upcoming 2010 AFF Suzuki Cup and that's where the story begins. Oh, the AFF Suzuki Cup is basically like, um, it's a World Cup, but it's just Southeast Asia. So countries like Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, you know all the rest, compete in and whoever comes up on top is the winner of the Suzuki Cup. That's basically it. And so the Philippines just narrowly qualified for it. Yeah, had we not lost to Cambodia on the final day, we would have actually not played in this 2010 Suzuki Cup. But the team was drawn into Group B of the Suzuki Cup alongside the 2004 semifinals Myanmar, 
four time Suzuki Cup winners, yes, four time winners, Singapore, and the co host and the defending champions of 2008, Vietnam. So the Philippines were expected to finish bottom of the group with zero points, three losses, and a negative 300 goal difference. That's how expectations were of the Philippines heading into the tournament. And so on the 2nd of December, the tournament opened for the Philippines against Singapore. Our main strategy was defend. Defend for our lives. However, Singapore did score in the 65th minute, courtesy of a goal to Alexander Juric. And it looked like it was going to be cruise control for Singapore. However, with the last kick of the game, the Philippines scored. So this one-all draw against Singapore was known as the biggest shock of the history of the AFF Suzuki Cup. Well, for, and that lasted for like two days. Turn up! The Philippines' second match was against the co-hosts and the defending champions, Vietnam who just defeated Myanmar 7-1 three days ago. And so all signs were pointing towards a Vietnamese 12-0 victory as, I mean, Vietnam won the last game 7-1. They have basically the whole stadium full of Vietnamese. There were probably just like two Filipinos in the stadium supporting the team. They were, the Vietnamese were playing at home and they were the defending champions. And how about for the Philippines? Well, um, we've only won one match in the history of the Suzuki Cup ever. And that was even against the Minnows, Timor Yeste, a country you probably never heard of. And so the Vietnamese would be spanking us throughout the night. I know I said 12 nil. Try to keep it down like maybe 6 1, maybe. Try to score a goal. That, that's kind of like the expectation before the game. However, in the 38th minute, something incredible happened. And the attack. Well, against the runner player, it. Philippines have gone in front. That is totally bizarre. We were winning 1 0 at half time. We silenced the whole stadium, basically, with that goal. And I've never heard a stadium got so silent because of that. And so throughout the second half of the game, Vietnam would continue to push on for an equalizer. They would make attacking substitutions that would help lead Vietnam over the line and beat us 12-1. However, that left their defense quite exposed. And so in the 79th minute, this happened. Stop there by Great Witch. Okay there. Now, Phil, young husband. Looks useful. Great save by Hong Son. And still Philippines for the opportunity. It's still Phil, young husband. Just this be a goal. Yes, the Philippines have scored again. Philippines were winning 2-0, 2-0, 2-0 against the defending champions, against the co-hosts, against a whole packed stadium just full of Vietnamese fans just booing at us or their team and we were winning not just like one lucky goal but two, we had two goals against Vietnam and guess what? They didn't score against us and there, and there was just 10 minutes to go so the team held on for full time and in the end the match ended 2-0 to the Philippines and and with that result it produced the most shocking scoreline in the history of the Suzuki Cup and it will never be topped and so even after the match the Vietnamese coach decided not to be a good human being and just, and just decided not to offer a handshake except defeat to 
our manager saying that uh, we played poor football and just parked the bus, meaning we put just 11 people on the goal line and just defended for our lives. Well, then how do we score two goals? Even our coach, McMenemy, was in disbelief of this result. And so this milestone victory was known as the miracle of Hanoi by many fans. And this kick-started the renaissance of Philippines football. In the end, we actually made it to the semifinals of the 2010 Suzuki Cup. We were the only team in Group B of the Suzuki Cup not to lose a single game. And we were expected to concede 300 goals. And so with the miracle of Hanoi, it saw the increase of interest in the sport of football amongst even the average Filipino who doesn't even know what the offside rule is. And making players such as Neil Eswidge, Chris Kentwich, uh, the two young husband brothers, and many others of that national team immortalized the legends and heroes of Philippine football. And so now, the Suzuki Cup, which happens every two years, the Philippines is now known as a perennial dark horse pick rather than a team that everyone would destroy 8-0 like every two days. And so Sports Illustrated even had this victory as the top 10 footballing stories of 2010 and perhaps even the biggest victory for a nation in football. And so at the time of recording this video, the Philippines are currently competing to qualify for their second consecutive AFC Asian Cup after we qualified back in 2019. Hopefully, we don't screw up. So I will be doing a watch along at 12.15 p.m. Philippines time zone on Tuesday the 14th of June where the Philippines takes on Palestine whereby we might need the win on that day to secure qualification to our second ever Asian Cup. And dear God, if we don't qualify. And so yeah, that was the story of the miracle of Hanoi and the rise, well not really a rise, but the huge fall, but the huge rise of Philippines football. And I do hope you guys enjoyed that video. And I really do hope that you guys get to join my live stream on this YouTube channel on Tuesday afternoon, where we hopefully don't lose to Palestine. Please, I don't want a repeat of this. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do give this video a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring the notification bell so that you know when I'm about to go live for that watch long this coming Tuesday. Stay safe and happy Independence Day to all my Talibayan. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Well, in the live stream.